Good morning, and welcome to the sanctuary of Cornerstone Assemblies of God. I am Pastor Richard T. Wade, and I would like to say thank you for joining us today. I pray the Word of God can speak to you, and the Holy Spirit make it real to you. Now, a pre-recorded message from Cornerstone Assemblies of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, you're good. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise. Just just give him praise for a moment. Just take a minute. He's worthy. He's great. And he's greatly to be praised. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated if you can. This morning I want to minister to you a message entitled Faithful God. Because he is faithful. Friday, Allie and I were sitting on the couch. I think the kids were already in bed. And just, she was making a post or looking at pictures of Cooper because it was his birthday, you know. And when the baby turns turns nine, you know, mama's already, you know, stressing that next year he's going to be ten, you know. And I was like, can he turn nine first before we cry that the baby's turning ten? And so, but we're looking through pictures and she's on Facebook and scrolling through. And she made a statement. She says, you know... This kid has lived a lot of life in his nine years. But what that translate is, is God has allowed us to live a lot of life in those nine years. Looking at his pictures that she's posted of him on Facebook, pictures of him in Turks and Caicos, pictures of him in Hawaii. And I was telling somebody this morning, he went on a mission trip before he was born. She was seven months pregnant or so when we went to Belize and there's pictures and she's got her big mama belly on, you know, and these mission pictures. And uh, sadly, my belly was sticking out further than hers at that time. And y'all think I'm big now. I've lost weight. And so, uh, but uh, just thinking about it and, and being totally transparent with you and we're getting into the word because this is when this message began to be birthed in me. But then last night, as I just lay in bed, thinking on the good things of God, I was going to preach this morning to you in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, but I couldn't get away from this statement that God is faithful, and He's a faithful God. He's a faithful God. A faithful God. And so, you know, life isn't always easy. There's plenty of trials and tribulations. There's plenty of stuff that doesn't go the way we want it to go. It goes the way we wish it didn't go, you know. There's been plenty of things we've prayed for and was hoping for a yes, but God give us a no. There's been plenty of times we wish God would have done something right now, but it was a year, two years, three years. Some of them we're still waiting on. But in the no's and in the not right now's, He's still faithful. He's still faithful. We've never been begging for bread. We've never been forsaken. Things have been thin. Things have been rough. There's been trials and tribulations between us and friends. There's been trials and tribulations between us and family. We're not immune from these things. You know, there's nothing like getting phone calls saying that your parents in jail. (laughs) You know? Y'all worry about getting the phone call that your, mom, your kids are in jail. Well, I get the phone call, my daddy's in jail. And so, no, Allie's parents, praise the Lord, hadn't been in jail. They've been on the mission field and in the pulpit, but they hadn't been in jail. And so, <laughs> we're not immune to those things. But through it all, it is well. Through it all, God has shown himself faithful. And so, I mean, Allie's smarter than I am and, you know, and all those things and all educated and all that and comes from an educated family, but they're just educated hillbillies. Um, We're just uneducated hillbillies. And so hillbillies we are, you know, 
<laughs> all of us. Uh, she was born in Texas, but raised in Arkansas. Glory. Uh, but I, which I was born in Texas and too, in Texarkana, because Foreman, Arkansas, Little River County didn't have no hospital that would deliver babies. So you had to come to Texarkana to be born. But <laughs> being a good old Arkansas folk, just simple. You know, from a hometown of a grand total of a thousand people, if you counted everybody and their dog. I was telling somebody, I think it was uh, Jason and them yesterday, they were going to, yeah, because they were going to go see Sydney March. And I said, I chose not to go to SAU because of a graduating class of 58, 39 of them were going to SAU. And it was like, I done been kindergarten through 12th grade with y'all. I ain't going to college with you too. And so that's why I went to Henderson State instead of SAU. <laughs> and so uh, that, that's, that's why I made that choice. It's like, I can't spend no more time with these folks from Foreman, Arkansas. Why am I telling you this? Because I'm just an old country boy raised by some old country folks. My daddy poured concrete, my mama taught school. I wasn't raised in church. My mom and daddy didn't go to church. But praise God, I was invited to church in the fifth grade. Praise God, I got saved at church camp between sixth and seventh grade year. Praise God that there was a church family that loved me. Praise God that there were men and women that God put in my life to sow seeds of wisdom and to encourage me and to, to spur me along. They saw something in me that others didn't see and they helped cultivate that. I've told y'all stories, and I'll never forget Sister Nancy Acker. She was our piano player at Foreman First Baptist, and I had made the choir, and then I moved from choir, and I was about to be the music director. She'd come up to me after church, and she says, do you have a suit of clothes to wear on the pulpit? I said, I mean, I, she says, no, 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 a suit of clothes. Well, no, ma'am, I don't own a suit. Well, you can't be on the pulpit without a suit on. We were one of those churches. We still had ladies wearing hats. And so she took me. Yeah, that's right. My wife still wears hats. Amen. And Sister Lorraine. We got two of them. Amen. But they do it for style, not for conviction. And so. <laughs> but she took me to her house and her son was in college and he was a similar build to me. And so all of his clothes that he would no longer use, she just emptied out his closet and gave to me. Now, I don't care what you wear on a plate. You know what I mean? I'm not about, but the fact that she saw something, instead of fussing and saying, that kid don't need to be up there, he's dressed inappropriately, she fixed the problem. I'm telling you these things because I want to talk to you today about a faithful God, and i got to set the scene that I'm nobody special. i got to make it plain that I'm just an old country boy from Foreman, Arkansas, from a working class family who struggled just the same. I had to work in high school to buy my own school clothes. I had to work in high school to help my mom pay the utility bills because while my dad did work, his drug habit was more expensive than what he made. And so he had a good job, but he had an even better drug habit. And so I, you know, had to pay. I had to pay the water bill every month to keep the water on. I had to have internet for high school, so I went and paid the phone bill and the internet bill so that I could have it to do my school work. See, what I want to talk to you today is about a faithful God, and if you will put yourself in the hands of a faithful God and refuse to believe the lie of the enemy that you are a victim and that you can't make it, I'm telling you, if God is for you then it don't matter who is against you. Because greater is he who is in me than greater than he who is in the world. I'm telling you, with a faithful God, anything is possible. I'm not telling you this story for pity. I'm telling you when people look at me and they think that I'm some kid that was born with a silver spoon in my mouth and I must have just had everything in life handed to you. I'm telling you, I've had to bail my daddy out of prison when I was in jail, when I was in college. <laughs> Again, my mom and daddy wasn't getting a phone call. That Richard got in trouble and he's in jail. 
No, I was getting the phone call. Your daddy's been arrested. I don't have bail money. Well, I do. And bail him out. Pay the bills. Still to this day, things have to be done. I'm not saying this. I love my mother and father, and they have come a long way, and things are so much better today than they used to be, and I give God glory for that. But what I'm telling you today is I want to paint a picture that a faithful God can take a nobody from nowhere. And I'm still a nobody from nowhere, but I got a faithful God. I got a faithful God who has allowed somebody from Foreman, Arkansas <laughs> to declare the good news gospel of Jesus Christ on every continent. <laughs> but Antarctica <laughs> and Australia, but hold out, they're coming. We're we going to go. We're going to go. Because God's faithful. We're looking at those pictures of Cooper and seeing that in his nine years, he's been at Turks and Caicos. That wasn't family vacation. It was a time of ministry. We got to see some family while we were there. Seeing the pictures in Belize, those are beautiful pictures, but we weren't there on vacation. We were there to preach the good news gospel, to help build churches, to clean and remodel Bible colleges, and to set in place training centers for other preachers to become better preachers, for people to learn the good news gospel of Jesus Christ, to go to little islands and people who just needed somebody to tell them that Jesus loved them and that there's some people standing behind them who's going to see them through. My beautiful pictures in North Africa, and we're streaming, so I can't tell you what t city and all that, but those pictures are beautiful, and I enjoyed my time there, but it was there to pray the Holy Ghost of God down upon that nation, to pull down the strongholds that has been there, to pray that God would flood eyes with light that they may see. I'm telling you, it was beautiful in the pictures that you see of us when we were in Israel. I thank God that I've been able to stand at the Dome of the Rock twice in my life, and I'm only 36. Glory to God, and I'm going back, and you can go with us if Jesus tarries but I'm telling you this things we weren't there on vacation we're not there to puff ourselves up but we were there to declare the good news gospel to people who were lost and hurting we were there to pray and to believe God for his return that our heart would ever be even so come quickly Lord Jesus to have our faith stirred up when you can see rocks that their composition has been changed at the very peak of Mount Carmel where Elisha called down the fire of God and there was such heat on these rocks that they can't explain that the very molecular composition of these rocks have changed. Glory to God. A nobody from nowhere, but with a faithful God. But with a faithful God. But with a faithful God. Anything is possible. Because with God, all things are possible. Take your Bibles and turn to Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6, I'm going to start reading in verse 13. For when God made a promise to Abraham because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely I will bless you, and surely I will multiply you. So after Abraham had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men indeed swear by a greater authority than themselves, and for them an oath of confirmation ends all dispute. So God, wanting to show more abundantly the immutable, uh, immutability of his own counsel to the hearers of promise, confirmed it by an oath, so that by two immutable things, in which was impossible, it was impossible for God to lie. We who have fled for refuge might have strong encouragement to hold fast to the hope set before us. We have this hope as a sure and a steadfast anchor of our soul, which enter, enters the inner place behind the veil. This is where Jesus has entered for us as a forerunner, since he has become the everlasting high priest in the order of Melchizedek. This morning, I want to pick up here and, and talk to you about this faithful God. 
I want you to understand that when God made a promise to Abraham and it goes on and deals with the immutability or the unchanging ability of God. It really means when you look at the definition of immutability is that he is unable to change. Not just that he don't change, unable to change. The very characteristic of God is an un changing God when he does it when he sets it into motion it can not be changed now for me that did something for me when I was reading and praying about this because it's one thing to just not be willing to change it's a whole nother thing when you can't change it's not in your characteristic it's not in your ability you are an unchanging God And whereby he could swear by no higher authority than his very own. And so he made an oath with Abraham and give him a promise. In verse 15, this is where I want to talk to you for a little while today. It says, and so after Abraham had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. After he patiently endured, endured oh don't none of us like that word patient that might as well be a four letter word but not only did he do it patiently but here's the real word I want us to look at is endured he endured when you're going downhill with the wind at your back you're not having to endure anything But it's when you are trekking up the mountain. It's when you are trekking through the wilderness. It's when you are on the long journey. It's when there is a struggle. When there is a fight. To endure means that you are either under attack or there is a resistance against you wherever it is that you're going. And so Abraham patiently endured. I told you a piece of my story this morning, not to get your pity, as I've already said, but to show you that a faithful God can do anything with somebody who is willing to surrender themselves to him and not back up, not give in, but to endure. I'm gonna t- I'll am tell you this, and I say this in, in humbleness. I say this in meekness, but I say this in a confidence because the Holy Spirit of God has made it real to me. If there is anything about me, that gives me a leg up on anything it is an anointing of the Holy Spirit and a hard headedness that I just won't quit that might be what sets me apart from somebody else but the thing is is you can have that same ability with the enduring power of the Holy Spirit because he says that he will and he will he will he will empower us to be witnesses And so he is the strength. He is the motivation. He is the force behind me, pushing me where I can't go on my own. But you've got to listen to his voice. Church, y'all forgive me, I'm taking off my jacket. Because it's nice fall weather outside. We didn't want to turn the air conditioners on because all y'all would have been freezing. So now I have to endure (laughs) patiently (laughs) that it's 75,000 degrees on this platform. (laughs) Hallelujah. Patiently endure. See, your struggle and my struggle may be different struggles. Your journey in life may look different than my journey in life but the same Holy Ghost the same shed blood the same Heavenly Father will empower and equip each and every one of us no matter the situations and the circumstance 
And so we must learn the voice of the Father. And when the voice of the enemy comes, and he comes in like a flood, the Word of God tells us, so he doesn't just tiptoe in. He comes blundering in like a herd of nine and ten-year-old boys. You know what I mean? Uh, I was watching them yesterday, played Nerf Wars and all this stuff. I had Cooper's little birthday party. and <laughs> You better have it all bolted down and you better have it all taped up and put a little bit of bubble wrap around everything because there is no grace about any of them. They just come blundering in and Marshall's chasing them. I was Allie's big long-legged poodle and he's just as rough as they are and is just as obnoxious as they are and they'll tear up Rip. And that's how the enemy comes in, like a flood. It's not this nice little slow trickle. He bombards your mind. He'll bombard it from every area of life, trying to get all of the noise in your life so loud. You can't hear the still, small voice of the Spirit of God saying, It is well. I am here. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. And so this morning, my message is a little bit more of a teach than a preach, but I want you to hear that, that the voice of Almighty God is whispering to you, Yes, you can. The enemy's telling you you're a fraud, you're a fake. Do you remember all the mishaps you've had? Do you remember all the bad things you've done? Do you remember how far the enemy has pulled you? Do you, do you remember that? Do you remember this? Do you remember when you've told God this before that he's going to set you free? Do you remember this? Do you remember that? See, he's the accuser of the brethren. The sisters, too. He's the accuser. And he's like an old lion who's roaming to and fro, seeking whom he may devour, because he comes but to only steal, kill, and destroy. But here it is. But Jesus. Jesus has come that we may have life and have it abundantly. And so this morning, dealing with a faithful God, we must patiently endure to obtain the promise. So you may be sitting on a promise of God. It may be a year old. It may be 10 years old. It may be 20 years old. Who knows? I'm telling you to patiently endure. Because what happens more times than not is we give up somewhere along the journey and say, well, I guess God never will. I've been waiting three years. I've waited five years. Look at the ten things that's gone wrong in my life. God just must not care about me. God has forgotten the promise he's given me. God has taken back his word. Or then the enemy will come in and say, well, really, you never heard a promise from God anyway. That was just your flesh. You're waiting on something that doesn't even exist. Just carry on. Give up. Abraham patiently endured. Could you imagine being 120 years old your wife pushing on a hundred before you conceive the promise you've been waiting on 80 years. And then to have received the promise, have the child, love the child, and hear God ask you to march him to the mountaintop time to an altar and killing and willingly strap the sticks on the back of your child and have him climb up I'm not taking us there today but scripture says that when 
Abraham had the servant wait and they went up the mountain, he says, we will return. Because he knew God had already fulfilled the promise. God had already given him the child. And even if he had to kill the child, God was able to raise him up. God was able to give him another one. God was able. He just understood that he had a faithful God. And that while he didn't understand the situation, and as crazy as it may seem, the very thing I have believed for decade after decade after decade, God, you've proven yourself faithful and brought it to me, and now you're asking me to give it back to you? Yes. Because he's a faithful God. Abraham patiently endured. After he had patiently endured is when he obtained the promise. See, what we like in American society is God, prove yourself to us right now. Give us all of our promises right now. And once I have everything I want and you prove yourself to me, then... Then I'll worship you. Truth of the matter is, that's a lie too. Because how many times, and I don't mean this ugly, but it's just the truth. I'm a young guy, sure, but I've been in ministry 16 years. And in these 16 years, I don't know how many times, I cannot count them. People who will hit rock bottom and they run to Jesus. Jesus will clean them up and get them on the path again. And then they forget about Jesus. And they hit rock bottom. And they run back to Jesus. And he cleans them up. Sets them on track. And then they forget about Jesus. And they do it all over again. Well, until we can worship him in the good days. Worship him in the bad days. No matter the days, just worship him. We have to patiently endure Whatever this is. Would you look at verse 18? Talking about God, it is impossible for God to lie because He is unable to change. That in this, with those facts, that in that understanding of who God is, that if we flee to him in refuge, we can have a strong encouragement to hold fast to the hope set before us. This is where I want to talk to you a minute about it's up to you. See, if God has given you a promise, you're having to endure some things. You've made, here, and let, me, let me pause here, I'm going to teach for just a minute. There's a difference between a struggle that the enemy has brought us as an attack and then us just suffering the consequences of our own bad choices. There is a difference, a big difference. And oftentimes we give the devil credit for the bad choices we made. Now, sure, he tempts us. His big scheme, his plan is to draw us away from God. But at the end of the day, it is our responsibility. It is our responsibility to choose to be doers of the word. It's our responsibility to hold on to who he is. And so, because it is impossible for God to lie, because he is unchanging, then there is a, I love this, it says strong encouragement. So whomever wrote the book of Hebrews, some say it's Paul, some say it's not. It doesn't matter. It's breathed by God. But in our lingo of today, it would be like, I, I strongly suggest that you hold fast to the hope that is set before you. 
So when we get in our struggles, when we get in our slumps, instead of jumping ship, that's the time to go back and remember the promise that God has given us. Set our eyes on that and grab on to it with everything you've got. It's happened time and time again in ministry for us where it seems that everything is great and then all of a sudden the bottom falls out, something crazy happens, things unexplainable happen and you're just like, what in the world is going on here? And then I'm being very transparent with you. I begin to second guess myself. You know, all the things that was ever ugly said about you, they immediately come back to your mind and you, well, maybe, maybe I did, maybe the hand of God has left me. Maybe, the, uh, uh, so see, you're not, I, I'm not immune from it. I, I suffer it too all this thing began to flood in and the fear and the doubt and the oh no's and it's time to jump ship just forget it I'll just go on and disappear I failed God again but to pause get alone get away from people get away from noise just get alone and get in the presence of God and stay there until he has spoken. And if he gives you a correction and a scolding, take it. But then when he reminds you of the promises that he's given you years before when he reminds you that this is just one more thing that you're going to have to patiently endure there's still a promise it's still coming just patiently endure and you will obtain it when I hear that that's when I know my God does not lie my God is unchanging so therefore the hope has been set before me that if I continue this race if I continue the course before me there is a hope and there is a future if I'd never receive anything on the face of this earth, if I remain faithful to him when I breathe my final breath, there is a hope and a reward that waits me. I have this blessed hope. And because I have this blessed hope that I can lay hold of the hope that is set before me, then while I might be facing all kinds of things, I may be in a battle, I can say it is well with my soul. My, my body may be riddled. My body may fall apart. I may endure hardships on this earth, but it is well with my soul, and I shall stand in the presence of Almighty God and declare his faithfulness because he is a faithful God. Verse 19 goes on to say that we have this hope as a sure and a steadfast anchor for our soul. Well, let's talk about an anchor for just a minute. It's not real glamorous. And it has to get dirty. I was watching a video on social media some time back and it was this beautiful boat and I mean it was pristine they had it polished and spit shined and the part of the rope the, not rope the chain that was holding the anchor that we see in this picture it was glossy black and pretty and it matched the rest of the paint job on this boat but then it was time for them to leave and I don't know all the nautical terminology it was time for them to leave and they pulled up the anchor. And it wasn't too long that pretty black glossy chain disappeared and it was this rusty corroded looking anchor and chain that's coming out of the water. It was beat up and banged up and, and it wasn't much to it. It didn't look too pretty. But that anchor had to endure some things. And that anchor had hold. And while everything up top seemed to be peaceable, good and bad, that anchor is what kept it where it should be. 
a storm come up, it might get rough up here. You might get a little seasick. You might have to take a Dramamine, but that anchor is holding. It's not going to allow you to be taken out to destruction. It keeps you safe in the refuge. Well, see, because we have a sure anchor and a faithful God, while we may be in life storms, and we may be tossed here and there sometimes. It might get a little, woo, you know, you're a little queasy and you got to hold on and get your sea legs. You're not sure if you're going to make it. We got an anchor that will never fail. And so, Christian, men and women of God, people of faith, hear me. No matter how hard the winds blow, no matter how high the waves get, no matter how bad it seems, your anchor isn't some rusty metal anchor. Your anchor is Christ Jesus himself. He bore the cross of Calvary, bore stripes and beating for your sake, overcame death, hell, and the grave, and your anchor sits at the right hand of God the Father, ever interceding on your behalf. You have an anchor that will not fail. You have an anchor that cannot lie. You have an anchor that does not change. He is the hope and the future. He is the blessed hope. He is a firm foundation.
Thank you so much again for taking time to listen to a message from the sanctuary of Cornerstone Assemblies of God. We do this through the help of our listeners and friends in the community. If you would like to donate to our broadcast, you can go to cornerstoneatlanta.tv and give as the Lord would lead you. But again, I, Pastor Richard Wade of Cornerstone Assemblies of God, just say thank you for taking time, and I pray the Lord make this real to you today.